keep in mind though keep in mind that we uh, i i d so there's there's the bottom four because the thing is we didn't I, there's a few strategies uh, here that aren't being aren't listed like bot so all in pessimist is bottom one but what if you had gone into the second to bottom one each time what would that look like but the second best strategy is the bottom four yeah so, so it's, it's not literally count trade yeah count I'm, trade. I'm really do you know what? i was speaking to another guy seth he had a we were talking about very similar ideas and i first met him he had an idea called crypto crowd and he had this idea of a crowd investing thing. He, he had, I was working on proof of learning at the time. He had proof of wisdom. He ended up turning it into a project called Pink. I'd actually raised money on it. And he, he tried his thing. He was going to do AI based on, he had an AI called Rose <laughs> that would take market signals from very similar to this and use them as like trading signal. And he found the same thing. The thing to do was counter trade what the retail buyers were saying you should do. And he was very convinced he'd found the secret to all markets for a while. And then it just stopped working all of a sudden, apparently when the market started going up this year. So interestingly, when his thing stopped working, ours started working if you counter traded them. But mm. he found exactly the same thing. And I think the same thing was true on what was the other crowd sentiment thing? There was another project. Not Numerai, were you? Not, not Numerai. It was a bit more normy than that. It was a syndicator. Oh, yeah. So basically, this counter trading thing is signal. It's almost like you don't want to disrupt it too much because this is like. On the F one, you, the hamster one's kind of useful. You can see, you can, that's just like random walk, right? And like one in, this is what you would expect actually, like one in 20 odd times or whatever. It's the top, but all in pessimist is actually the top. So then how, if you, so let's say for example, you were like, that's what I'm gonna do. And I remember we spoke about it as a form of insurance. In a way, it worked this way because if you would if you would would counter trade yourself in a way, you can show yourself, right? So what I think we could do is build investment strategies like you as the market participant can trade the outcome of the votes. So if we actually do all in pessimist as a strategy. And you can just like literally DCA a thousand dollars into it each month, and it also rebalances it for you. It actually trades this strategy for you. That would be an is, interesting DeFi product. Is the slight issue now that if people know that, that their votes will sort of do you know what I mean? It'll do the sort of it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. They'll go. I think, I think this is going to go really well. Like it's almost clouded the the purity of the strategy <laughs> by talking I, I about mean, it. it You've put a basically well, you've put a feedback loop into whatever, which you know is definitely going to create some chaos. It might be, it might be amplifying signal. It might be dampening it, or it might be just creating noise. Yeah, but the point is, we don't know, and we wouldn't yeah. even say what we could do is create three DeFi investment strategies. Generally, on markets two point zero, we've now got like a range of markets where you take this data the outcome of the vote trades automatically trades you into one of these strategies. And there's no promise it's going to work or not. You're just doing it. It's your just, that's your investment decision is to trade based on this index in a few different ways. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I like the, I like the extremities of the strategies as a simple sort of understanding of all in pessimist, all in optimist. And then, you know, yeah. hamster, the example is your three straps. Yeah, another useful benchmark would be what happens if you just had bought ETH and, and held it. Yeah. Or, or bought Bitcoin. Strategy nine is high cap maximalist. Oh, okay. Oh, that's the oh, That is there. Okay, cool. 
Bitcoin and, and Ethereum. I've just noticed Shift Run stops here and he, he probably missed the bit at the beginning when we were all saying how brilliant your work was. So just reiterating that, you're really good this man. Yeah, we love it. Yeah, we're just digesting it. I'm going to yeah, start trading on, uh, on uh, All In Pessimist. Let's see what happens. <laughs> all right. I mean, let's, I don't think we've got a formal session, to be honest. I would record it anyway. Right? I mean, let's decide what we're going to talk about first before we start recording this. Yeah, what contract? We're doing the yield contracts, right? No. no, no I, I, I shield it as an influence thing because I'd like people to look at, uh, into it. Because of Stoner Cats, I think it would be interesting. But otherwise, it's up to you how people are feeling. So, influence doesn't actually have any smart contracts. We have a, an NFT. But that's like just a standard NFT. Oh, what yes, what we yes, need is that JSON thing. Um, so there's outputs from all the votes. Because yeah, if we, can, if we can pass that into a CSV, we've now got stuff that people can run it analysis of. We could also look at the yield. But but uh, will we okay? But for the influence, what you're talking about, you want the data for all proposals or just for a single proposal? I think we need the ability to get them for all proposal, but just I, I would say if we could get the one for the Stoner Cats DAO vote, that's the best vote we've had so far in terms of engagement and using the combined strategy. Yeah, that's the data that they got when they clicked on that. There's like a results link. That's the data they have. Okay. So you can get that by going to, yeah, there was, there was a bug in it, but I believe it's fixed. I'm looking at the, is people, is the, if you go to the Stoner Cats proposal for the down folks, is it loading for you? I've tried it on a couple of devices and I'm just getting the spinny wheel on it. Actually, yeah, I'm just getting a spinning wheel too. I don't need to connect my wallet. Yeah, it's loaded for me. Is, is it, are you connected to your wallets? Yeah. yeah. I wonder if we've. I, I'm not, you see, because I'm on a mobile device. Uh, yeah, this is. Are you looking at our box or still like that? Do you want me to download the JSON or the CSV? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, if you could, we could, we could take a gander at it. But it, it might be that on a concluded vote, it doesn't show you the outcome if you've not got a MetaMask connected. What would you prefer, uh, the JSON or the CSV? CSV, if there is an option. Yeah, all right, I'll stick it in the, where should I pop it, general chat? Oh. Oh, balls. Sorry. Just look at the Tune Analytics board that Lizzle did as well. This is amazing. Yeah. Okay. There you go. It's, it's in general. Oh, why is it? Oh, you probably have to download it and then open it. Yeah, download it. For it's, so, it's so cool when you go to the vote results and just see all of the actual cats themselves. <laughs> have you seen the message from Shift Run Stop? No. He said, I was having problems with my mic, but I was trying to say that even this week on Market.Vote, the coin that we voted for least, Uma, is the only coin in the green. So despite the fact we're now aware that we consistently vote least for the best coin, we still did it. Girl, we're idiots. No matter how hard we try, we're always wrong. <laughs> it's like they've told you the rules of the game and we still, we still mess it up. It's there's there's something here. Do you know how hard it is to find any kind of alpha in markets? Like there's literally billion dollar funds with quants with ten PhDs doing the doing. The yeah, shit. I kind of feel like we shouldn't tell anyone about this. Honestly, like <laughs> yeah, this is. It's, do you realize how fucking weird this is? It's a really it's good. Like, um... It's a really good bit of analysis on like human psychology as well. It's you no, know, literally what you think is the best thing. Don't do that. And you still go, I know what I'm doing and we're still doing it. And it's like, <laughs> yeah, I feel like it's super weird. This is like nine X alpha. <laughs> it's like not, it's yeah. not mincing about alpha with like two, 3%. No, no, it's, and okay. There's another thing too. It's like, it actually maxed out on round 26. It like it after the crash, it took the rest of the time to recover. Yeah. So hold on a minute. So actually, the that strategy. So people are. Yeah, everyone got wrecked regardless in the market. This is that. So basically, there's. Doesn't matter what all the altcoins do. 
when Bitcoin crashes, everything crashes. Everything's correlated to Bitcoin. So what you did at that point is to have been for that strategy to work was die to be the least one. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Sorry. <coughs> Excuse me. Bless you. Which strategy did the least bad in that drop? I also yeah. wonder at that point if you flipped it, let's say there was an option on markets to not predict the best performing token, but also to predict the worst performing token, would our yeah. Would our anti sort of <laughs> would our would our shit alpha as in like our terrible ability to predict thing also work in reverse? Because if the market's in a downturn, that's your natural instinct, isn't it? To go, this is going to get absolutely wrecked more than this. One. So I wondered if that's something to look at. So actually, one of I had a few different markets in the white paper suggested. I don't remember what they all were now, but I had winner market, which is the one we've got. Loser market, which is exactly that one, do the opposite. Yeah. It's the same but short. Wrecked market, which we're talking about doing with I trust, which is pre predict on which smart contracts are going to get wrecked. So I spoke to yeah. those guys yesterday, and we actually missed a huge win on that because Cream, which got wrecked recently, would have been in the prediction market and is on Nexus's covers. So it would have been a beautiful example of it, but it's not like there's going to not going to be more contracts getting wrecked. And the other one was experts market, which is when we get VCs to do crypto shark tank on pre-release tokens. So they vote on which token they think is going to be the best. Yeah, there's I mean, this whole game of spin the chaos wheel and then see see who's the best at predicting what comes out. It's yeah. endless fun. Just think about sports, right? It's, what is sports commentary? They were like roll a random number generator and then they're like, this number was higher, but wow, we didn't think this number was going to be so high. And look, that number's low and, and it's fun for everyone. It is. It's, it's like... There's like a weird psychology in it where people like interpret emotions out of numbers. It's pretty, it was pretty bad. There was a documentary about who's that footballer, Chris, who's like got the really bad gambling problem. The one who was the Arsenal oh, player. Oh, um, Merson. Paul Merson. Merson, yeah, yeah. He was on TV <laughs> the other day talking about like gambling addict, addicts in particular interpret like, like they, they literally give him a laptop with like random numbers and they give him a pot of money to bet on like high or low on, on a one or 10 things like a loop. And what he'd do is see, it was like, you had to go red or blue. And there was like eight red and two blue. And you had to guess on which one it was next based on like the weighting. Because it was like eight red or something. You'd be like, oh, it has to be more yeah. blues next time or something. And then he'd go all in on it. And... He, he, he felt like there's like, and it didn't happen. It went to one and nine reds again or something. And he was just like, you bastard. <laughs> it was just like, yeah. oh, you don't he like literally had a, like an emotional relationship with the randomness. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's like, he's like literally arguing with randomness. It's like, it's like you know, where people are just like interpreting. Yeah. So that there's something of that going on in this. It's but what we're actually doing is detecting the collective chaos of people's minds. But I, I actually love that we've got the BSC market as a reference point to this, which the hamster does one. The hamster does better on like like forty percent of the time, thirty percent of the time than that. It's like worse than shit. Do you know what I mean? BSC. It's like nothing. There's absolutely zero signal on BSC. So it implies that very subtle changes in the game. So what I think is happening on BSC is there's a small number of players. There's no crowd there, right? Because the front end yeah. doesn't work. So yeah, it's like all bots, right? It's just all A5 people or something. It'd be interesting to know like how many unique addresses we're voting in we did have that data it, it is a few hundred do you know what we should do is keep a list of 
let's use the as we're talking now come up with just research questions and we'll dump them in the data analytics channel so something like how many unique addresses on bsc i think that's already in i know that's that data's in lizzle's june analytics board but any kind of research questions like that let's just dump them into there as prompts for people for the late date yeah there's this also this other question of like is there something about the coins we put on bsc that's different yeah they feel there was a different if you remember when we compiled that list yeah we gave them a different name didn't we no it was just like a, it was a different basket it was basically the 10 oracles that Chainlink had at the time if you remember yeah let me pull up the what are those coins um, there's like xrp it's a load of classic alts in it rather than DeFi. that's right yeah it wasn't DeFi. so part of this could be reflecting just like the kind of crazy returns in DeFi this past year yeah uh, so that's csv you've got there just for the stoner cats vote it does have all the addresses in doesn't it yeah and it comes up as three different lines on the combined vote doesn't it is he each each vote on a different line is recorded on a different row in the csv yeah, I think part of this is that there was a bit of messiness with the aggregated strategy. Yeah. So there's just a bit of data cleaning that needs to be done. To yeah. Simple panda's job. That uh, vote market analysis that Lizzle's done is amazing. The PDF. It's good, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, what does this tool drive for? Or Fleek? Is Fleek the tool here? Like, what's... Where is it? Fleek, fleek, fleek. It's fleek.co on dry forest on fleek.co. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, can we see why, can we fix why the votes aren't showing for on um, influence, by the way? Here we can we flood back to the devs. Yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll escalate that. Because I'm starting to throw it over to people and say, hey, check out the Stone Cats vote because it's a really great prototype one. And it's not because you haven't got your wallet connected, no? I think it is that, but people don't oh, right. generally. We don't care once it's once it's closed. You can see it, right? Yeah. Let let me check. Exit. I'll check on one. Yeah, I've got my wallet connected, and it's still not showing. Oh, oh no, it is now. Yeah. I think part of it is a timing thing, but yeah, I'll, I'll escalate this. No, I'm really pleased with that vote. It's got. I think it picked the best. The best name, which is good. If. Everyone seems very happy with the outcome. If you're looking for consensus, what you want is there's a vote. Everyone votes. Some people have, obviously people have different preferences. And then there's an outcome and everyone goes, yeah, okay. That's what consensus feels like. Everyone goes, yeah, I'm all right with that. That's like the best of all worlds when it comes to a vote. And I certainly feel like that happened with that vote. Jimmy, I've got what Al here actually to relay that back to us. And that's one of the questions. If I was researching that from, yeah, how would I research this as, a, as an academic? As if I was interpreting the, how good the tool was, I would evaluate if people considered the outcome valid. Was it a legitimate vote? Yeah, this is a critical thing, right? Because even if your vote is fair, if no one thinks it's fair, you got a fucking problem, right? Yeah, that's it. If everyone's like unhappy, it was, it was the other thing that happened with the London vote. If you remember the outcome of that, it was like the the outcome of it was so like, yeah. Do you know what I mean? It was just like that makes sense. It wasn't like surprising in any way whatsoever. It felt like consensus. Is, is there something in what you're voting for? Because I guess 
all these three things, like the name of the DAO for Stoner Cats, which coin you think is going to do best in crypto, and then things that matter to you in terms of being a Londoner, they all feel like very different emotional votes, if you see what I mean. Yeah. Um, sorry, my phone ring. Um, I better take this. I'll, yeah, <laughs> I'll, just, I'll just leave with that question. <laughs> The point is there's something unusual about the feeling of consensus. Like normally when there's an election, say, half of the people are pissed off. Do you know what I mean? It's normally it's people like very upset about it. Does quadratic voting lead to a more, lead to greater acceptance in the outcome of a vote? I bet it does, because I think a lot of times like there's somebody, there's some choice that's everybody's like second choice but not many people's first choice. So, yeah. So I, and also we don't have the media like actively trying to get everyone to hate each other in this case. So <laughs> yeah, um, there's, there's no, it'd be interesting to test out in those kind of adversarial environments, right? That would be the real test, right? It's, it would be. And so if I was analyzing this again, there's going to be people with strong opinions to one of the others like my top vote i'm looking at my vote metalwood studios is actually my third choice meow dow was my top one meow dow because i thought stone cats dow like it makes sense to me catty. catty yeah makes sense so that was my top one metalwood studios i put yeah it makes sense metaverse hollywood get it but then when the outcome came in i liked it a lot more do you know what I mean? It was like, ah, people like this. I was like, I wasn't upset that Meow Dao wouldn't, didn't win at all. Yeah. And, and so, Meow Dao was a close second, you know what I mean? It was not yeah, close. Yeah, it, was it was second. second. It was second, but it was like, there's a clear, there's like a clear winner, right? That's, I think that's one of the questions. Does QV, QV create clear winners? So that's one of the things intuitively I think is one of the things that happens because of the quadraticity in it, it creates separation between the, between the items, the chances of a dead heat on these votes. So 647 votes for the top one and 647 votes for the second one is incredibly unlikely. Right. Because it's, so it's, there's something about the granularity because it actually gives you, it reduces the like, the set of like quadratic voting reduces the set of possible vote outcomes and and yes no like, just... like, there's certain solutions you just can't have because because it, it's not a it doesn't fit into the quadratic voting thing so there's so you by by spacing out the 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 it's like uh it's like how in it's back to that spear packing thing. Yeah. Yeah, I think it would definitely increase as opposed to decrease because you have a lot more different. Um, no, got your. You... Oh, can, can, can you guys yeah. hear me? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Talking or. Yeah, I'm talking. Yeah, yeah. I'll say, is, is, is that better? Or... A little bit. Cool. No, I was saying, I think it would increase the different combinations we can have due to the nature of quadratic voting. Where well, I, I, I'm comparing it to linear voting. Yeah, so if you're doing binary yes, voting, yes. Then, it, then it increases it dramatically. You're right. Uh, yeah. But if, compared to linear voting, it decreases it quite a bit. So how much... How me, let me think about that. So the way I think about this is, so let's say you've got conventional linear vote election where you've got, okay, it's like Labour, Conservative, Green Party, Lib Dems and like the BNP and some other scumbags, there's five possible worlds that can happen out there. There's, this allows you to have more worlds interpretable in the ballot, right? Yeah, so if you just have to choose one, right, then there's five options. So that's yeah. what I was calling binary voting. Yeah. If you have 100 voice credits you get to spend, but you don't spend them quadratically, you just like, you can put say 20 on each of them yeah then that would give you there's i don't know let's, what's the right way to compute this it would be you've got you're dividing 100 across into five groups 
Um, so it's, a, it's five raised to the hundredth power or something like that, but then you divide by all the weighted choice. Yeah, that's the word. So weight choice is that there's no quadratic restriction on subsequent votes. It's just you can you can if you've got a hundred voice you've got hundred credits, you can spend them you can spend all a hundred on one thing. So there's there's no greater cost yeah, I think to amplifying your voice on a particular item. Yeah, I think it'd be shown by a binomial distribution. Is probably the best way to represent it. Do you think on, on which one the weighted choice or quadratic? Yeah, it would be potentially. I don't know because there's like psychology in, in it, isn't it? So the point of that is so let's say what that does is disincentivize preference. It, yeah, it gives you, or, or it, it actually, I remember from the Glenn Wild paper, they talked about how it basically means the most extreme player wins. That's right. So so it's so let's really yeah. all in on what you want is like the best strategy. Hedging is not. That's right. That's right. So let's say it's the it's the Green Party, the whatever. So you're a climate warrior. You I think weighted choice. If you get a hundred votes and you put them all on green, you're doing better than someone who's got thirty votes on Labour, twenty votes on Conservative, forty votes on X, Y, Z, right? Because you're just up against people who are just going all in on their one issue. Whereas in quadratic voting, you get more votes the more you spread them out. So if you go, so I'm looking at the Stoner Cats vote now, if you go all in on Metalwood Studios, right? So you just go 10 on Metalwood Studios, then you get 10 votes. But if you do eight on Metalwood Studios, then you've still got like what thirty six voice the uh, voice credits left, which means you can have up to thirty more votes. So, yeah, how much better is spreading preference in terms of voice power, voting power? It's like, it, and because it's quadratic, it's it it means the derivative is increasing linearly. So like like the more like the difference between spending nine and ten, that last one costs you more than going from eight to nine. So there's so you kind of there, there's almost like more tension in that being extreme. Yeah, being extreme doesn't pay in quadratic voting world. Well, the, you you can do it if you care enough. You can do it, but you really sacrifice the ability to. That's it. It's the payoff. You're sacrificing your voice, your voting power, to be extreme. You ca you could have much more influence on other items if you wanted to. If you spread your vote out a little bit more. The sphere packing thing, UV. Go into that a little bit. This is so one of the weird holes on this. I encountered this back in grad school. Sphere packing is this like weird concept that ends up touching like a bunch of topics in like information theory. So the idea is you've got you, you got a bunch of spheres and you want to pack into pack them into a box. And the question is like how many spheres can you pack in that box? And it sounds like a relatively simple question, but it turns out it's deep but what's even what's the really interesting thing is that what if they're not spheres but the center of each sphere is okay what if the box is the set of all possible utterances in a language and the spheres are actually the words that you choose now recording oh, oh. <laughs> all right so I, let me back up a little bit for the recording so okay so sphere packing the, the math question is like how many spheres can you fit in a box and it's an interesting problem just from a math nerd point of view, but then there's this application in information theory where where the box is actually the set of all utterances in a uh, in a language or let's say a code a, some kind of code that you you've written. So it could be like in the voting case, it's like the set of all possible votes. 
and and then the when you're packing spheres what you're doing is you're saying like this is a valid thing to say in this language and then this isn't and so by by pack by putting the spheres so the idea is that this, the, the, you're not allowed to let the spheres overlap with each other so that puts some space between words so it makes it hard for the it makes it the cost of making errors or the likelihood that an error will result in a misinterpretation low. So, so it's used in error correcting codes. The idea is you surround your words with a buffer where there's no similar words to that word. So if they like misspeak or they slur their words or a few bits get flipped between you and the satellite, then then it, it's okay because that's the only word it could be or it should it'd be like there would have to be a really big error for you to end up there if you meant something else. And so I feel like there's something that like that with quadratic voting going on, where we put some space between the different things you can say. Yeah, um, there's a there's a discrete amount of configurations of vote. Yeah, and it, yeah, it's discrete in the sense that there's if you slightly modify. Okay, so the, I'm looking at the Stoner Cats one. If we just turned it down, if we just said, okay, what about 648, and then we just took one from, I don't know, somewhere else, in some cases that would work, in some cases it wouldn't. What if, or what yeah. if maybe we take, take away five? Let's say we take away five because that's not a perfect square. So if we take away five from one and put it into another one, it's, it may be that, that there's actually no way to, for that to have happened. Yeah. Just there's no way for you to vote... Let's see how to say this. It's like there's, instead of there being an infinite number of universes, like there's a set number of paths. If you scale this up to like, all right, we've got 11, 12 items in this list. What if there was a thousand? What if there was a million voters and a thousand items in the list? Mm. How many possible outcomes could there be? How many, how many possible votes are there? And the question is, is this better at social consensus than any other voting strategy? For many years, the instinct that it is. And it's both a mathematical thing, which is this like, all right, there's some like, like literally a way to mathematically represent, and this is important in like democratic theory, if you're going to have a voting system, that claims to be better at consensus, you need to prove it with like formal logic. So that this is the kind of avenue when it comes, maybe the sphere packing idea is a lens into, you know, that sort of mathematical representation of it. But there's also, for me, this really important psychological dimension to this, which is, does the outcome land on something that people agree with? Does the vote feel legitimate? And the two are co-related. If it feels like there's an infinite number of ways to do it, it doesn't feel... It just feels random rather than intended, if you know what I mean. And, and yeah, and, it, 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 and keep in mind, the sphere packing thing applies to... The, I, I should clarify, it, it applies to the voice credits spent because you can't spend a amount of voice credits that's not a perfect square on anything. Yes. That's that's where the space comes from. It's not the number of votes. It's the number of voice credits. That's right. But, so you, um, you'll find that, that to, to, to qualitatively land where that feels like when you're voting, it's when you get to the end and you've got one voice credit left. And you, there isn't a clear way that you can, you have to reconfigure the whole set to find the way to spend them all. Mm, mm. Do you know what I mean? It's, you've got to rebalance the whole thing you have to go back through the list take votes off multiple lines in order to spend that one whereas if it were linear voting you could just put it on any one of those 10 or yeah, you can just whatever go bang. that's it there's no rebalancing necessary so that rebalancing is this is the thing that um, i used to do a lot of research in reflective thinking it's like a big thing in learning theory how do you get people to reflect Reflection being the process where you interrogate your own thoughts to see what you actually think. And people don't do it, generally. Everyone's just like steams into shit without ever thinking about what they're actually thinking. There's no, it's a metacognitive process. 
And when you're doing these votes, you get to the end and you go, ah, shit, I've got a vote left. And if you want to spend it, and this is why like, I had this idea to incentivize spending 100 voice credits, but it might have the problem of just incentivizing everyone to spending 10. If you want to spend them all properly, you have to then go and rebalance the whole thing. And then you have to really interrogate what, you act what actually are your preferences. Do I actually want this more than the other? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, this reflection, right? It, like it, the fact that there's like a little math problem to solve engages some other part of your brain. That, yes. And then it's like, oh, what do we think about this? But you can do it without doing like, math. Even I used to really weirdly, you talking about this, I used to do the same thing with my fantasy football team every year in that I would create a team and then just make it and then you have the up until the start of the season to tweak your team every yeah. time i but basically to stop myself doing that because i always made my team worse if i basically stuck with yeah. the original team i've done well so i would just create a new team make it exactly the same and then tweak the other one and a hundred percent of the time the first team that i chose did best and it's this counter to what you're saying but there are times when you reflect on stuff and you inexplicably just argue with your thinking <laughs> in the first place which I, yeah. I, I totally appreciate is different to what we're talking about with quadratic voting, looking to spend that extra thing. But there's an argument for both things, isn't there? It's, it's like the, it is the counter. So the question is, does the, rebalance, does the rebalancing moment get you to a better alignment with your true thoughts, your true mm. perceptions, or worse? So yeah. what was happening in your fantasy football team is, you were ending up like your instincts were correct first time and your rebalancing of the problem ended up with a worse outcome. Yeah. And often that would yes. just be influenced by talking to people go, who, who did you put in at left back or whatever? And then I go, oh, maybe I should have done that. And then that one change actually, it actually weirdly really like quadratic voting means I have to change like four players to be able to put this player in who I wasn't that sure about in the first place. And then my whole midfield changes because I don't have the money to keep the one I like. It's very, yeah. actually thinking about it, it's quite similar. Yeah. Yeah. So the first vote I ever created with quadratic voting was, it was during the Brexit thing in the UK. And it was like, what do you care about in Brexit? And it was like sovereignty, Irish border, trade policy, blah, 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 blah. This is what sold me on it, because there was, it's this multifaceted problem that cuts across all these different things. And it was a system that made you think about which of these things you actually cared about, in what order. And we, we replicated this in the London vote to a certain, like, very similarly. And I think that is, the, the, does it improve decision making? Now, the kind of implicit logic is if you reflect more, it improves your decision making. That feels like a very sound hypothesis to me. So I would get, again, I would say, does, does this improve decision making due to reflection? Is another research question, I would say. Do you have, are there ways to measure whether, how much people are reflecting, like easily measure that? For one, the fact that people are justifying their votes is an evidence of reflection. Could you, could, could you possibly take a snap? When someone first gets to the justify your vote page, right, uh, before they've even written anything of justify your vote, is there a way of, <clears throat> there probably isn't technologically, but is there a way of taking a snapshot of that vote compared to once they've justified it and submitted to see if there were many changes in their own head once they submitted? And it's like what Facebook does where they like record all of the messages that you don't send, but you type. Yeah. Can, can we actually, do we pick up the state of people interacting with the front end live? So could we see what people put their allocated their votes on as they were voting? We do not currently record that anywhere. That's only on, on their front end. Is uh, it possible? It's definitely possible. Yeah, it's it's an interesting thing to do. Yeah, like that's just that moment when they click vote. That's what you want. The first time they click the vote button, 
just it, you almost just want a snapshot of that page of their allocation and then whatever then happens to the point like they might just submit that vote and justify it and that's it but if it does change for then at least that's some sort of interesting data for us to go oh look how many people are convincing themselves they've got it wrong oh so you okay so you're saying after they get get do they go do they once they hit the justify screen do they go back or not i guess that or, or you could almost just say look well, the first time they hit the vote button so I, i'm on a fresh vote i've spent my points I haven't got to the justify page. The first time I hit vote and it takes me to the justify page, is there a way of taking a snapshot of that allocation, which we can then conf compare once their vote has actually been submitted, however much longer that takes for them to go back and forth or whatever, and just see if there's a, a difference between their initial thinking and the time it's taken for them to argue with themselves <laughs> about what they spent their votes on. Yes. So that would be that would definitely suggest some kind of something interesting in the psychology you know like mm. that there was a, a moment of reflection happening and yeah. and you could even measure almost measure how much reflection was happening by the deviation of their like next vote from their previous vote if you have a look at the data analytics channel i've just posted two bits of data from my qb <clears throat> experiment circa 2017. oh yeah 2017, 18, maybe. Can you see all of the colored blobby ones? Mm -hmm. That's people's different voting strategies as they were voting. So you can see ones where it's gone over and they've ended up with spending 100, right? Yeah. And there's different voting styles in this. But I think you can see these reflective moments happening. So if you look at the second plot, quadratic voting usage during the voting process for our voter you can see it goes to 125 and then down to 25 that's a rebalance then up to 200 down to 20 odd rebalance so there's two rebalances during this vote and then they find 100 uh, i'm sorry nick where is this i, I lost it data uh, analytics okay. hashtag data analytics there we go okay i'm gonna Go there. Okay, that's that's what I got. Okay, so they like overdo it, underdo it, overdo it, underdo it. Yeah, they're okay. I see what you mean. There's like this kind of like how many wobbles before equilibrium? Yes, that's a rebalancing moment, right? That's a, and then there's like an equilibrium moment at the end when they're trying to use all their voice. So at the, at the, yeah, they went all the way back to zero the second time. They almost went back to zero the first time. Yeah. So in the kind of colored ones, you can see people's, because the colors, you can see mostly people like start with, so if you see the one that's, let's say one, two, three, four, five down on the left, you can see they start, there's like between two items. I'm colorblind, so I can't see what that color is but there's like red and purple. What you're detecting is people's initial preference straight away. Do you know what I mean? Like I, this item is the one that I care about instinctively. And then they add in other items over time. Yeah, we could record this and put this on the back end just like, and make this available to people. The slightly scary thing about this is that you can see people's thoughts with it. Right. You can <laughs> It's, yeah, it's, it's close. It's I can watch you think in real time. I think there's an argument to be made that this might also like if you can induce more reflection, you might make votes less uh, like more resistant to propaganda. Yeah, it's you might detect oh, your instinct is that this is important, but over time you realized it wasn't. Which could, I mean, it, or, or it might just, it, who knows? It could be, the, is the propaganda the thing that hits first, or is it the thing that kicks in after your instincts? I don't know. Yeah, I mean, um, at no point ever in your life should you do these quadratic votes unless they're open source. Yeah, well. Or you're getting paid enough to give people your direct thoughts. Interesting, though. Can you see the items that people are voting on in that? Proof of real image sustainability down i was trying to get the london college of fashion kids to set up a sustainability down in 2017 
Wow. There's the head of the curve, and then there's <laughs> Nick in 2017 trying to set up a Dow with London College fashion. <laughs> yeah. We ended up doing pretty, it's funny, you know, it's that proof of real image that that actually came out as the consensus one, and we worked on it for the next six weeks of the course. And we, we actually got started time stamping. The idea of that one was you would time stamp images to see if, as they were taken, because they were dead upset that they were like the images that make it onto billboards are so edited that they're not real anymore. Mm. And, it, and it's like screwing all the kids' heads up because they've got this distorted idea of beauty. Yeah. And someone's just raised like 15 million quid to do that. <laughs> it's like yeah. I saw it on Twitter the other day. Someone's just gone, you know, image attestation, proof of real image thing. Those yeah. kids being rich. Or I could have. Well, one either way or the other. But yeah, there's, there's like something in this that's extremely powerful. And I think there's like in the data, so the, let's have a look at the data that what we've got. Is there anything that we can get that we don't have? So we've got that thing. I don't think we necessarily need to run at watching live votes happen at this point in time. We're more interested in the output consensus, but it's there if we want it. The... And that's something we could also charge people for. We can be like, listen, if you want to use this for free, yeah, this. But if you want advanced analytics, yeah, if you you want to, if you want to read people's thoughts, burn some FET. So there's there's some simple stuff in here, which is Ricardo can't see the analytics chat. Is that gated? Oh, yeah. Let's just open that one up. Or we did talk about an analysts chamber. Let's certainly put everyone who's in this call in it. I'm quite, I think there's like serious alpha in this. Let's keep it relatively closed. We could gate it to citizens maybe at some point. So there's other questions. Did everyone justify their votes? Or no, what percentage of people justified their votes? There's also people who voted once. How many? Single voters didn't get it. Votes. Or, or there's also what was the distribution of of top? Did some topics get more jurisdiction ju justification than others? Yeah. You know? Is strength of opinion related to justification? Yeah, that's another question. Did quadratic voting how much did quadratic voting limit plutocratic power and by that there's some people if you look at the vote outcome there's some people who had 25 cats or 30 cats and then okay. could how have much had they've been able to vote yes how much they would have been able to vote with separate accounts, multi-token holders. So, for example, there was a couple of voters who had 30 tokens and went all in on one vote. So, I'm looking at the vote list here. So, if you go into the actual vote, you can see... In vote list, there's some people where it's got voter ID in an array, 591, 1901, 261. There's some people like four to five tokens. There's a vote here where someone's got like maybe 10 or 15 tokens and got 30 votes. One thing, they went all in with loads of votes. So they've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10 tokens, 10 cats, they could have had 100 votes, but they actually got 30. I mean, but it, if, if we might want to be careful about advertising that as well, because it basically tells people how much more voice they'll get if they split it over multiple accounts. If they start sibling, yeah. So what we do need to do is head off what's our next layer of civil protection. Remember, it's civil war, so we should be ready for the next battle. So the next round is, okay, that person goes, ah, oh, I could have had 100 votes there, but I got 30. 
So what I'll do is I'll transfer my 10 caps to 10 different wallets and vote that way 10 different times. That's going to cost, how much does that cost in gas for one? What's the cost of that? There's an implicit friction to it because of the transaction costs. Yeah. But also we can just see that they've done that, right, on chain. Like we could do some analytics to see that the person's done that. Like it's not been sold through OpenSea. We should be able to see if those trades have happened through OpenSea. We'd be able to detect organic trading. Yeah, we could actually. All those transfers would be on the blockchain. And we can see, we could even, it would be an advanced tool to build, but you could detect like, okay, you, these two NFTs belonged to the same account at some point in history or in the last 10 minutes yes. or the last 10 days or whatever. So therefore, uh, we're going to group them together. This is um, our, this, that civil safety idea, if you remember, Evie. Yeah. Where you add a percentage chance. <clears throat> probability that this account these accounts are sybils and then you can start to build that in the weighting of the votes oh yeah i remember that that was that uh, that paper they yeah signed it like it, it turned into a security parameter it's like, what percent yeah. of sybils will you withstand what percent of sybils can you withstand before the vote breaks so could the meow dowers have won by sibling is one of the questions. So let's say there's an adversarial war between Metawood Studios and the Meow Dao people, and they're at war with each other. Could they have won by, let's say, yeah, that's interesting, because let's say we're now at war. And we both trying to brute force the vote. I guess if both parties are going to sibble, then it's back to being fair almost, isn't it? But if one does it and the other doesn't, does it swing consensus? Yeah, it gets very game theory at this point because it's okay. There's like a Nash equilibrium where we say, look, let's just all agree that the original vote state it is what it is. We're not going to sibble. We're not going to try and swing the votes. It is what it is. We're going to play it fairly. And the Nash equilibrium could come through from the idea that, look, it's on the blockchain. It's going to be very difficult to hide from that. It's if you're going to start, if you're going to start non-cooperating to the game, then there's the possibility of detection. Then you just know this is like how most policing works. The chances of you, the the idea of getting nicked for something is enough to stop many people from doing bad things. But let's say all of a sudden it becomes very adversarial and everyone wants to maximize their votes. It does, it, the game theory would say, be the first person to do it and do it on the vote that you want to attack the most. So... Like, let's say you are slowly accumulating the control of voting power. And you could use it up on a trivial vote, like the name of the DAO. But let's say there's a, some, there's a vote in the future where they've got a huge amount of money in the treasury. And we're doing on-chain. This is why I think I was arguing that Chris Black last night. He was saying anyone who's not doing trustless execution of treasuries management, it's not a DAO. And this is just his shtick. It's all oh, they're using multisigs rather than fully decentralized tech that doesn't exist yet. No uh, true thoughts. It's just it's like, you know, it's like there's always like some like higher barrier to to cross to be considered real AI. You know, like yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's, it, he's this isn't decentralized. It's his shtick, and he, he just he's made actually made a kind of fairly successful out of career out of pointing out the blindingly obvious. Which is, oh, this, this tech isn't completed yet, basically. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I was like, look, don't be a fucking idiot. There's, if you're just exposing yourself to governance attacks. So, this is a governance attack. So, let's say you've colluded with a whole bunch of cats across you. Like, now there's two adversarial 
groups of cats who hate each other. Let's say it was the people who wanted Meow Dow now. This has caused an unseen friction within the Dow. There's two factions. And the Meow Dows are going to get their revenge at some point. <laughs> they could essentially be like, we're going to civil attack a vote at some point in the future. We need to accumulate a collude all the people who voted on Meow Dow, they've already, that's the, we know who they are. In fact, it would be the people who went all in on Meow Dow. I assume there is some. I'm going to look for that. Yeah, there's a few. So Meow Dow 10 voters. Let's assume that they were just like, they're just aggrieved now that they didn't win. But waiting for when there's a load of money in the treasury. They want to steal the treasury and fork the Dow. That would be the attack. We need to, like, basically offset that attack, that governance attack, through some mechanisms. The mechanism is, basically, we're not trustlessly executing them. Like, there's basically a council that has veto rights over the outcome of the vote, which is absolutely sensible, which is why Chris Black's argument is stupid. Because, hey, I'm looking out for everyone's DeFi safety by trying to convince everything, everyone to do something way more risky. It just doesn't make any sense. But what we need for decision dot vote down the line is a way to convert this vote signal to governance attack resistant executed votes. Does that make sense, Yumi? Say so, so the last part again, sorry. We need to look onward beyond influence to decision where we do the trustless execution thing oh yeah yeah i think that that's absolutely on the roadmap there's a few things that need to happen one of these is you can insert a kind of like self-reflection in the system to, to like kind of speed bumps to kind of yeah. like make give people opportunities to interfere if the system's gone awry so for example like in markets we have that challenge period Yes. And, and you can do and you could do multiple layers of challenge periods, just create more opportunities for human or maybe stakeholder or administrative intervention before something goes live. But of course that creates more overhead and more gas fees and things like that. But yeah. But yeah, but yeah it's definitely the you know, I don't think no one's nailed the perfect government yet. I mean it's we should be in DeFi systems, it's possible to rug the whole government if you don't do it right. Yeah, yeah, and it, it can happen very quickly. <laughs> yeah. So, like it, you know, it nearly happened in America last year, but or did, depending on your like perspective. But the in DeFi systems, it can happen in one transaction, unless you've got these these like safeguards in there. One of the things that I think might play into it is that certain nfts build up a sort of trust score by behaving in the appropriate way over time for example the council of cats for example could have elevated rights over the execution which they do at the moment as a multi-sig but it allows you to broaden out the multi-sig from being let's say a five of seven to a quorum of 70 percent of 100 nfts for example do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And yeah, and there's some cryptographic tricks you can do to make these things not quite gas intensive. You can combine signatures and things like that. Yeah. That's what Taproot was. So yeah, is anyone interested in your thought? Ksen, you've said the qualitative aspect feels superior to the quantitative one. Did you mean the justification? Because the justifications were there, it feels like a more legitimate vote. Yeah, okay. Yeah, this is a super interesting conversation. What are the outcomes? From I've dropped a bunch of essentially research questions into the data analytics channel. Is there any other ones that we've missed that we think? Like I'm very, oh, David's here actually. David, if you drop something in one of the chats or come on if there's any questions that you wanted regarding the data that you were looking for the DAO vote, message him in there. Okay, she's backgrounded. So basically, we've got the data now, right? I think let's 
people have churned up some amazing stuff out of the markets data. 